Mathematical Induction for Dummies. I'm here to teach you mathematical induction for dummies. Let's start out with a real life example we're all familiar with. Mathematical induction is really similar to dominoes. If you can be sure the first domino will fall down, you can be sure the rest will fall. See? Isn't mathematical induction fun? Now that you understand the concept of mathematical induction, let's talk about the formal definition of mathematical induction. If you can prove something for the first case, you can prove it for all future cases. Here's the formal definition, kids. Read it carefully. Let P of n be a property that is defined for integers n, and let a be a fixed integer. Suppose the following two statements are true. P of a is true and for all integers k greater than or equal to a, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true. Then the statement is true for all integers greater than or equal to a. Take the example of the sum of the first n integers. Their sum can be written as n times n plus 1 over 2. We need a formal proof for this. Let's use mathematical induction. First, let's start with the basis case. Let's use 0. The sum of 0 is 0. 0 times 0 plus 1 over 2 is equal to 0. Looky there, kids. 0 equals 0. Let's come up with an induction hypothesis. Do you remember what that is? That's right. If we take the first k integers and sum them, their sum is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. We want to show that the sum of the first k plus 1 integers is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. We now need to find a way to substitute in our inductive hypothesis. Kids, do you see a way we can substitute in our inductive hypothesis? That's right. We can rewrite the summation from i equals 0 to k plus 1 of i as the summation from i equals 0 to k of i plus k plus 1. Then we substitute our inductive hypothesis. We get k times k plus 1 over 2 plus k plus 1 equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. Now let's find a common denominator. Look kids, k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2 equals k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. We did it! Yay! Wasn't that easy? Now, let's try a proof that doesn't include a summation. These problems can sometimes be more difficult, but we can do it together. If you draw n dots on a piece of paper, n times n minus 1 over 2 lines can be drawn between the dots. Here are some examples to show you what I'm talking about. In the first example below, how many dots are there? How many lines are there? That's right, one dot and zero lines. In the next picture, how many dots are there? How many lines are there? That's right, two dots and one line. In the final picture, how many dots are there? How many lines? That's right, three dots and three lines. Let's prove this using mathematical induction. If we have zero dots, we can draw zero lines. Zero times zero minus one over two equals zero. Zero equals zero, yay! This is our basis case. Let's state our inductive hypothesis. If we have k dots, we can connect those k dots with k times k minus 1 over 2 lines. Now we need to show that k plus 1 dots can be connected with k plus 1 times k over 2 lines. Well, k plus 1 dots is actually k dots with one extra dot. Let me show you what I mean. If I have three dots drawn on a piece of paper already and I add one dot, I can connect the new dot 
to the original three dots using three lines. If I have seven dots drawn on a page and I add one dot, then I can connect the new dot to the old seven dots with seven lines. Here are pictures to show you what I mean. With this information, we can substitute in our inductive hypothesis. So, k plus 1 dots is equal to k times k minus 1 over 2 lines plus k lines. By finding a common denominator and adding, we get k plus 1 times k over 2 equals k plus 1 times k over 2. We did it! So just remember, if you can find a basis case and write an inductive hypothesis, you can use proof by mathematical induction.